Hi there, this is just a quick video to give you some guidelines on how to do this um, modulation practice finale exercise. So each example is started off for you. You have a separate sheet of paper where you can do your analysis um, with Roman numerals. You can also do them in finale, which I'll explain how to do in a minute. Um, but it might be faster to do it handwritten. But what you do is you listen, obviously, to the first uh, part of the example. And then you decide how are you going to do a direct modulation based on that material. Uh, what I recommend you do, just for ease and speed, and also it's in line with the way uh, composers often think, is I would just copy and paste this same material here, um, decide, uh, that is the same chords and bass line, copy and paste it right there, then decide on what new key you want to go to, um, and then transpose this um, to that new key. So for example, in Penale, oops, that's very easy to do, just by doing copy and paste command. And then say, say you decided to uh, do a direct modulation to the key of uh, A flat, for example. Well, then you can just simply figure out what that interval is. Um, which, you know, up or down, but obviously closer to go down. So you go down a major third, and then you just simply right click and go to your transposition tool and say you're going to go down um, a, oops, chromatically, a major third. Um, and you, know, you, you could, this is one of the ways you could do it. You say, okay. And you'll notice everything goes down low. If, it, if the voicings are too low, if the bass notes are too low, then you have to adjust them, you know, by an octave. But at least you have the, the same general idea. And then you would transpose your melodic idea into that key as well. And that would be a, that would accomplish a direct modulation. Then you might tweak it a bit uh, for, uh, for further musical reasons, but that would that would get you going. Um, the other way to do it would be to, uh, if I undo that for a second, would be to use the key signature tool, right click, say key signature, and um, change to the key of e, A flat in this case we decided to go to. And it just transposes everything there to A flat. Then you reassign chord symbols and you decide whether you want to tweak. These voices might be getting a bit high, you'd have to revoice lead it and so on. But that would be, those are a couple of ways you could do it in Finale. Um, and remember to use the selection tool because if you just change the key there without doing that, it'll change the key for all the rest of the examples and you don't want to do that. All right, then for the other ones, which are not direct modulations, it's not quite as easy, um, but you could still copy the basic idea, like the basic baseline um, pattern, and then just change the notes to fit your new chords, the basic chordal pattern, and change the notes to fit your new chords. But you obviously have to come up with a new key area and go from there. But just in finale, the cutting and pasting, copy and pasting of the general pattern will allow you to keep the same musical content uh, the same group basically. So again I would just do this, copy and paste it, knowing full well that I'm going to have to change the chords and bass notes, but at least I've got the durations in there and I can just move things around to get my new chords. And then over here, the, this, this that same approach would hold true for the rest of these. This is a transitional modulation, so again uh, you could uh, copy and paste the bass line and chords, but then change the actual chords to be what you want. Decide how you're going to do your transitional modulation. In this case, since we've set up a pattern of two fives, I would recommend using a series of two fives to create your transitional modulation. So you might want to just copy and paste these measures of two fives and then change them to fit your needs so that you get to your new key here via your transitional modulation via two fives which again would be uh, creating a feeling of not being sure what key you're in for a while, and then finally resulting in a new key. 
And finally, this one, which is a deceptive dominant modulation, a pivot chord modulation, in other words, via a dominant chord. Uh, the example is telling you that in the new key that we've established here, this is 573, that is, this key is 573, but we're going to use that chord and it's going to modulate to another key, so it's going to be um, something else in that new key. It might be 5 of 1 in the new key is probably the best way to do it. Um, but you could experiment with other ways to do it. And uh, that would be the way to go about getting that deceptive dominant pivot chord modulation happening. Okay, now let's talk briefly about analysis. If you, if you do want to try, again, you can do the analysis handwritten, but if you want to try to do it in finale, um, what you would do is use the expression tool, um, which is available in the main tool palette. The main tool palette looks like this. It's available in the window menu. You click on there to open it up. And the tool we're using is called the expression tool. It looks like that. It looks like a, a meso forte symbol. You um, um, engage that, and then if you want to do your analysis, you would uh, uh, click on where you want to engage, do analysis, and then you look for the thing that uh, the heading that's entitled Roman numerals. You do that, and then you um, put the answer that you want to put by finding that symbol. Uh, and, you know, again, uh, it's a little more, it can be a little more time consuming, but if you if you do want to do it, you can do it. You can also make up your own if you don't find one. There's one, so I found it, so I click, and then it appears here, and I can drag it into place. Um, there's a <clears throat> four seven, so I'm looking for four seven. And uh, these, they're sort of grouped generally in the same areas. The special function dominants are in the same general area. And so on. so there's uh, 4, 7, etc. If you want to do um, arrows and brackets, for example, let's see if we can find something here. Okay, here's a uh, sub 5. So I would go there, I would find sub 5 of 4. which should be here, so 5 of 5, yeah, oh, here we go, so if you, if you ever find one missing, you could, you could also um, invent one, I'll show you how to do that, and then I need the arrow, so I do this, now you can create shortcuts, for example, if you want that arrow to be A for shortcut, you just hold, click on it, and you'd say shift A, and that little A will appear, and now from now on, if you just click on A, that'll appear, how about the B for brackets? Shift B, um, uh, Shift D for dotted arrow, and Shift, um, I'll just do right next to D, um, F for dotted brackets, or something like that. So what that means is that um, if I remember those shortcuts, I can um, I can just you know do a shortcut. So I can be here and I can say I want a dotted bracket. I just because I set up those shortcuts, I can just say D, hold down D and then click. And you can see the dotted bracket appear. I mean, the dotted arrow, I meant to say. Dotted arrow appeared. Uh, you can always double click on it to make it longer or shorter. Um, again, brackets uh, here. For a bracket, if you recall, we programmed the B as a shortcut. So I'm going to press down on B. And there it is. There's my bracket there. So th that's how you do analysis with the Finale um, library it's that, we, that I imported into this document. It doesn't come with any Finale document, I imported that library into this document. So just so you know, it's not going to be available in any old Finale thing that you open up. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, remember, the whole point of this is so that you really hear what you're writing. Um, if it's too complicated for you to use all these uh, chord uh, durations, you could just use half notes in your chords, but still try to retain the same rhythm of the bass lines, at least. That would be good. And... Uh, Double check by listening carefully that you haven't made any course spelling errors, errors. And one way to do that is to actually turn off the playback controls, which is like this. Just click out of them like that. And then you can just uh, uh, highlight a measure and just simply do Option plus Spacebar. And that will play back the chord that you are clicking over. So um, that's a short way to uh, 
get your playback happening. So, so if I just go like this, Option plus Spacebar, you can hear that one chord, then I can move over to the next chord, listen to that, make sure I like that, and so on, and listen to each chord one at a time. Again, that's Option plus Spacebar, if the playback controls are off. You can also start playing from there by doing Spacebar Click. Okay, that's it. Have fun. And then, of course, upload it um, after you're done.